So in the last video, we looked at uh, the concept of a bus and how we can use a bus, which is this set of eight wires, in this case, eight wires, uh, connecting multiple different modules together and how the bus provides a way for any module to communicate with any other module. So in this video, what I wanna look at is actually what it takes to build one of these uh, registers. In this case, we'll, we'll look at a register. These, these could be other things, could be input or output, but we'll look at, we'll look at building a register. And so a register, basically, uh, what we're trying to build is something that has uh, eight inputs uh, connecting to our bus that can store a value. Um, so there's some 8-bit value stored in here, series of ones and zeros. And uh, it's connected and it, and it can send that value out to the bus when the enable input is high. So there's an enable and a load uh, control input here. And normally the enable input would be low. And so whatever value is stored in here is not going to be uh, output to the bus. So it could be, you know, some series of zeros and ones. Uh, and, you know, we're not going to be outputting a zero or a one. We're essentially going to be disconnected, uh, essentially, because, you know, we're, we're not outputting a zero in the sense that we're not, uh, you know, syncing current, and we're not outputting ones in the sense that we're not sourcing current. Uh, we're, we're essentially just uh, appearing to be disconnected from the bus. Um, so if we're not enabled, other modules can communicate, and, and this module here is not going to interfere. But when this enable line does go high, then whatever value, whatever series of ones and zeros are stored in this register will be output on the bus. And any of these modules on their inputs should see that same series of ones and zeros and, and could choose to load uh, that value into, into their own uh, storage. So this register here, for example, has this load uh, uh, input. And if normally that load input would be low, uh, but when it goes high, then what happens is this module here is gonna latch whatever value it sees on the bus, it'll store that. Um, and it uses a clock input to do that, to, to, uh, so we can coordinate the timing. And what happens is, you know, once that load uh, input goes high, then the next time the clock transitions from low to high on that rising edge, then whatever value is on the bus gets, gets stored in C. Um, and then the load input can go low, uh, and other things can happen on the bus, doesn't matter. Uh, we've now have that value stored in C, and so we've essentially transferred the value from A to C. And so A can take on another value, other things can happen on the bus. C is gonna remember that value. Um, and then it can be enabled, and it can put that value back on the bus at a later time, or, or whatever it needs to be done. So what we're looking to do is we're looking to build something that can store a value uh, when on the clock rising edge, only when the load uh, is, is enabled, and then hold on to that value and then output it to the bus whenever the enable uh, input goes high. So if you've watched my videos on the D flip-flop, you might think, well, that's a pretty good candidate uh, for something to use. And if you haven't watched my videos on a D flip-flop, uh, I would suggest going back and, and taking a look at those if you don't already uh, have some idea of how a D flip-flop works. But just to, as a reminder, the D flip-flop has a D input and it also has a clock input and it uses this edge detection so that on the rising edge of that clock, when that clock transitions from low to high, at that instant that it transitions from low to high, it stores whatever value is coming in the D input, you know, whether it's a, a zero or a one, it stores it in the latch, and then that output is available at the Q output. So you might think, well, we can use, a re we can use just a series of these D uh, flip-flops uh, to build a register. So we have, you know, however many we need, we're building an eight-bit computer, so we have eight of them. Uh, and have those inputs and then you know just tie all these clocks together and uh, you know somehow that might work. Well, the problem with that is is we need to have some uh, mechanism to to not just always store whatever's coming in because these these D inputs are going to be connected to our bus and the value on the bus is going to be constantly changing. We only want to store the value on the bus in the register uh, essentially when we're told to using that that load. Remember, we've got the the load input, so we only want to. Um, load what's what's uh, on the bus when this load input is high. Otherwise, we want to we want to keep what is what is in here uh, stored in here. So what we can do is add a little bit of, of extra logic around our D flip flops to to kind of control how the the clocking has worked. So we still have our clock coming in here, and this is going to be our master uh, clock for the computer that everything is connected to. That clock is coming in here, uh, but what we have is we have our load. Uh, input over here. And our load input goes through some logic here that controls whether we actually are loading a new value into the D flip-flop or whether we're loading the value that is already in it back into it, uh, which is essentially doing nothing. <laughs> and so normally if this load is low, let's say it's low in this case, 
Um, then we're going to have it coming in over here. We're going to have a zero down here, and we're going to have a one over here. Uh, and so, you know, we're looking at this coming in through this AND gate, so we have a zero AND something else. Well, it doesn't really matter what this is. If we have one zero coming in here, we know the output's going to be a zero, right? Because if it's zero and zero, that output's going to be zero. If it's zero and one, then the output's still going to be zero. So we know that's a zero. Here, uh, we have, we're inverting that zero, and we get a one over here. And so in that case, uh, we know that one and one is gonna be a one over here. One and zero is gonna be a zero over here. So whatever, whatever this is, we'll call it x, we're gonna get the same thing out over here. So this, this same value is just gonna pass through. So this AND gate essentially is gonna, gonna appear to be transparent. So now we have or, we have an OR gate here, so we're saying zero or whatever x is. Well, that's just gonna be whatever x is. So x, you look, is that's what's being fed out of the, the, the D flip-flop, right? So whatever's stored in the flip-flop is just getting put right back in the input. Um, and so whenever this clock transitions from low to high, the D latch essentially just latches in the same value that it has um, and nothing, nothing changes. And that's because our load is zero. Now let's imagine a scenario where our load is, goes to a one. So we have a high value coming into our load, uh, our load input. So in this case, this, this second uh, case is the exact same circuit, so I'll just draw down here so you, so you see what's going on. So this is a one now. Uh, so we have a one here, we have a zero here, right? We're inverting that. Um, and so now, you know, this, this value that's coming in here, we'll call it x, whatever that is, um, it doesn't matter what it is because we're ending it with zero, so we know we're going to get a zero, right? So if x is one, zero and one is still zero. Zero and zero is zero, doesn't matter. So this is a zero. But down here, we have a one and whatever's coming in our, our input. This is, our, this is coming in from our bus. So these D1, D2, D3 could keep, keep going for you know, however many bits we have. We have eight bits, so there's going to be eight of these things. Um, so that input from the bus is going to come in. Um, so whatever that is, we'll call it y. And, you know, if we end that with a 1, then we just get y coming out. Um, and then, of course, if we OR that with a 0, we get y uh, coming out of our OR gate. And so in this case, when our load uh, goes high, when it goes to a 1, then when we get a clock pulse here, instead of storing the same thing that was in the, the flip-flop, uh, we store the thing that is coming in on the bus. And that's exactly what we want. You know, we want to load, when, when load is high, we want to load the thing that's on the bus. And then that latches it into this, this flip-flop, and we've, we've now stored it. And now that new value will be, will be output of this Q output, so this will now be Y. That'll be latched in there. So if we want to, we can go ahead and build this. And uh, this, is, this is actually, that <laughs> this circuit here is, is built here. And I've used four um, chips here, and, and just so you know what they are, I've got a, uh, this is a 7474, 74 LS74. And that is, uh, that is basically has two D flip-flops built into it. And so this is the data sheet for it, the uh, you know, 74 LS74. Um, and you can see it's got two D uh, flip-flops built into it. And we're using this one over here that's, you know, sort of these pins on the bottom. And so you can see it has the D input uh, here. You can see it has a clock that goes over here to the clock input. Um, you can see it has the Q output over here. And it has our inverted Q uh, here as well. Um, and it also has a couple other nice things. It has a clear uh, pin, so regardless of, of the clock input and everything else, you can, uh, if, you, if you take this clear pin low, then it just resets the flip-flop, it resets it to zero, um, sort of regardless of whatever else is going on, it's kind of an override. Um, and then there's also a preset uh, pin, which kind of does the opposite, it sets the flip-flop to one. Um, so we're, we're not going to use those necessarily, but um, that's what those extra pins are. Uh, so we've got, we've got that here. Uh, this is a 7474. And of course you could, you know, in the, in the previous video, I built a, a D flip-flop from, you know, discrete logic gates, and, and we could do that if, if we wanted to. Um, but in this case, since uh, you know I've already got those videos, hopefully you you, you know you can watch those and, uh, and know how this works uh, inside. So we're going to take a shortcut and, and just use that here. Uh, and then I've got you know an inverter. This is a 74LS04 inverter. I've got some AND gates. This is a 74LS08. It's got four AND gates on it. We're using two of them here. 
and then the 74LS32, which is the OR gate. Um, and so, you know, we're using one inverter, we're using two AND gates, we're using an OR gate, and we're using, um, in this case, I just have one of the 74LS74, uh, one of the D flip-flops on this chip wired up. And so what's going on here is we've got our, our load input, that's this yellow wire here. Um, and so we have that load input going into one AND gate, uh, and then we have the inverted uh, version of that load input going into the other AND gate. And so the one AND gate that, that's going into the other input of that is our connection to our bus. This is our, our data input here. Um, and so that's, that's going into the same uh, AND gate as the non-inverted load. So you can see that is going into the same AND gate here. And then the output of that AND gate, this third pin, is the output of the AND gate. That goes over to one of the inputs of our OR gate. Right, and that comes over to one of the inputs of the OR gate. The inverted uh, 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 load is is this you know comes out of the second pin of our inverter, and that goes over into the other AND gate uh, here. That's right here, and then the input, uh, the other input of that, uh, is this green wire here at the top uh, that is coming from the output of of our of our flip flop, the the Q. Uh, pin, I guess, of our flip-flop. And we also have the LED hooked up to the output there so we can see what the output is. Uh, and so the output of that of that other AND gate uh, is is here. That's this pin, and that is going over to the the second input of our OR gate. So our OR gate's got you know both of our um, both of our AND gates connected to it. Those those are these two wires here are the outputs of the two AND gates going into the two inputs of the OR gate. And then the output of the OR gate comes over here to the uh, the D input of our flip-flop. And then this white wire here is just the clock for the flip-flop, so we'll hook that up to a clock here. Uh, and then, of course, the output over here I mentioned before, we've got the LED hook there so we can see what it is, and of course it's also going back around uh, to our input here, that's this longer green wire. So we can, uh, we can hook this up and see what happens, and it looks like it appears to be nothing, but I guess there's a zero uh, stored here in our, uh, in our uh, um, in our register, I guess. This is our, a one-bit register, I suppose. Um, so what we can do is we can set our load uh, to low, um, and then our, our input, you know, we can, we can set that as a low or high. Let's set it to high. So we can see that right now, you know, the bus can be low, high. Uh, it doesn't really matter. It, the state of our, of our register doesn't change. Uh, and then our clock input, we can hook to a clock, and conveniently, we built one of those in previous video. So I'm gonna hook this clock that we built up here. So just connecting the power uh, across here. So now our clock is powered and so we can manually advance our clock or we can turn this on and we get a nice, nice slow clock. And so I'll hook our clock up there. Okay, so we've got our clock hooked up, we've got our input. And so now our input can be high or low and actually I'll let the clock run. So when it's low, you see nothing's changing. When it's high, nothing's changing. And that's because we haven't enabled it. So if we've got it high now and we enable it, we see that with the clock rising edge, it stores that one. And now if we disable it, the bus is free to change to a zero, to a one. Uh, it doesn't matter. We've now stored that one in here in our register. And now, you know, the bus is a zero. Again, if we enable or if we load, I should say, this is our load input. If our load input goes high, you see it stores that, that one that's on the bus. And of course now if the bus is changing, uh, you know, it's gonna pick up that new value because we still have our load high. But normally the load is gonna go high uh, just for one clock cycle. And then, or one clock, I should say. Uh, so we'll, and so this appears to be working. It seems to be doing everything that we need our register to do with one exception, which is that we have our output here, um, but, of course, one other thing that we need our register to do is is not always uh, send its output back, right? So if we if we just hooked if we just hooked the output of this back to the bus, um, we'd be constantly you know forcing the bus to either be a zero or a one, whatever this register is set to. So we need um, we'd like to add a uh, a tri-state buffer or something here so that we can use that tri-state uh, function of the buffer to to turn off the uh, to turn off the connection to the bus. And so the chip that, I, that I'd like to use for that is the 74LS245. Uh, and you can see it's got a bunch of these tri-state buffers. So if we, there's a lot going on in here. I know it's a little bit complex, but if we, if we just kind of look at, um, yeah, if we just look at, at this side here, what you'll see 
is we have an input here um, coming in on pin 9 and it's connected to a tri-state buffer that is then has its output connected to pin 11. And so you can see we can use this tri-state buffer to sort of connect and disconnect data flowing in this direction. You notice there's also a buffer flowing in the other direction, um, which, which can be convenient for connecting to a bus, and that's why this, this chip is considered a bus transceiver. It uh, is, is useful for interfacing with a bus and, and sending data in both directions. And there's a, there's a pin, pin one here is a direction control, and you can see uh, that it's hooked up to um, a couple gates here that, that essentially control you know, whether the, the bottom row of, of uh, tri-state buffers is on, in other words, data is going this direction, or whether the top row is, is on and data is going this direction. In our case, we're, we only want data to flow in one direction because we've, we've already got the, the load um, function here uh, worked out. So we really just need the tri-state buffer on the output. And so for that, we can, uh, we can essentially just tie this direction uh, uh, input to, to high value, to five volts, and that'll, that'll force it to always go this direction. And then we have an enable pin here um, that we can just use to turn on or turn off all of these all at once. Um, so this is a good chip to use as our, as our, uh, as our buffer. So we could add this to, to our circuit here that we have. Um, and then of course we would need to essentially build eight copies of this. Um, and you know, there's room on some of these chips, but uh, it would still take a fair amount of room to do that. And so this is where we kind of come to a, uh, you know, we have a, a decision to make, I guess, uh, which, is, which is what is it that we're, that we're trying to build here? Or what is it we're trying to do? I mean, we, we, could, we could approach this and say, you know, our goal is to build a computer using only basic logic gates. Um, and maybe we want to build our register using this. In fact, maybe we don't even want to use the 74 LS74 uh, as our as our um, as our D flip flop, and we actually want to build a D flip flop from AND gates and OR gates, you know, like like we have in previous videos. Um, and that that could be that could be a goal. You could you could choose to build a computer that is just AND gates and OR gates and uh, inverters and that sort of thing. Um, you know, my, my goal with this, I think, is, is more to, um, you know, learn a bit about building the computer and how the computer works um, and, and have a project that you can do kind of in your spare time over a couple of weeks um, and not, not be so hardcore that we only are going to use AND gates and, and that sort of thing. And so actually, what I'm going to what I'm going to do for the uh, uh, for the registers is actually something even simpler than this even simpler than this, which is the, the 74LS173 uh, is a chip that is a 4-bit D-type register. Um, and so it is actually designed to be used as a register. And so what you'll see here is you'll see that uh, this 74LS173 has four, um, uh, <laughs> doesn't quite fit here, but it's got four uh, D flip-flops in it. And it has the same logic that we've been that we've been looking at. It has uh, the output coming back around into an AND gate, uh, and then two AND gates going into our inverter. And you can see the input is going into the other AND gate. And then you can see the other sides of, of these AND gates are are connected to either side of an inverter uh, that goes to our you know they're calling it the enable. This is sort of our load uh, our load inputs. And it's a little bit weird. They have two of them and they're inverted. Uh, I'm not really sure why they did that. Uh, it's a little bit, a little bit less convenient for what we need, but um, definitely more convenient that all of this is built into one chip. Uh, so, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this chip. And the other nice thing about this, sort of nice maybe, is it also has tri-state outputs, and, and it has an output control. And again, they have two of them, and they're inverted. I'm not really sure why, uh, but, but they have this output control uh, that we can use to turn on or turn off this output. So you do have a choice of whether you want to use the 74LS173, which gives you a lot of the functionality in one chip, or whether you want to, you know, kind of uh, go extreme and, and try to build it out of discrete logic gates. You know, it's up to you. I, for my money, I, I say, you know, use this. Um, you know, I think in the, in the computer that, that, you know, that I'm going to build here, uh, we're going to use maybe 10 or 12 of these chips of the 74LS173s. And so if you were trying to implement that with discrete gates, I mean, you could do it. Um, and maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe you, you know, you, you enjoy that challenge. Um, 
but I think there's there's enough other challenge in, in building this computer that I think it's perfectly fine to take a little shortcut and, and use a pre, pre-built register like this. So in the next video, we'll, we'll go ahead and use the, the 74LS173s and build um, a couple of the registers that we're gonna use for the computer and go through testing them.